Good morning, folks. Uh, We're going to continue today with John chapter 5. We'll pick up at verse 30 and go through verse 47. This is a little cryptic sounding, um, and it's one of the criticisms of the book of John is uh, that it's almost too holy to sometimes make sense out of. Um, this is one of those few sections I would agree that say, yeah, it's a little little overly done, <laughs> if you will. But I think there's there obviously is a great word for us here. And so um, I invite you to hear what you can hear. If you get kind of stuck in a spot, don't sweat it. Just let it go and trust that there's going to be another good word coming for you. And towards the end of it, there's a wonderful one. I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that his testimony to me is true. You sent messengers to John, and he testified to truth. Not that I accept such human testimony. But I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But I have a testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father has given me to complete, the very works that I am doing, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me, and the Father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form, and you do not have his word abiding in you, because you do not believe him who has sent, he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. It is they that testify on my behalf, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. If another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the one who alone is God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom you have set your hope. If you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? So like I said, this is a little chunky, uh, and there's a lot of, I guess you'd say, undertones here. Perhaps the biggest thing here is that Jesus is calling, I guess, calling out that uh, it is God the Father who has sent him. Um, We all know that John was anointed. John was sent by God to prepare the way. But there's a group of people who have followed John that Jesus is distinguishing himself from. Um, There's also a group of folks who... um, would go to the scriptures instead of coming to Jesus. And Jesus is distinguishing the scriptures from himself. Um, the fact of the matter is, um, and a matter of fact, he comes to the point to the end where he says, you know, um, uh, your accuser is Moses on whom you have set your hope. The point of that being that the law um, is never going to get them to the truth of what God is doing in Jesus Christ. Um, I know that this may be a difficult word to hear, but he's even saying that you will not, um, you cannot go to the scripture itself as the source of that or as the, the, the stopping point. As a matter of fact, last night, one of our, uh, or the other night, our, our Bible study or our study group was learning about signposts and how, If we were to go through and stop at Scripture, or even stop at a holy person, let's say like John, or even if we stopped at a holy person like Moses, but did not continue on to the point of their ministry, 
that we would fail their ministry. Uh, let me give you an example. If you were on your way to Dallas and you saw a sign that said Dallas 25 miles and you stopped at that sign and never left it and said, I am at the signpost of Dallas. This is amazing. This was my goal in life. You would have violated the purpose of the sign in the first place. It was there to navigate you to a higher purpose. What Jesus is talking about here is John the Baptist. His point was to point the people to the truth of God in Jesus Christ. All of Scripture was written to point people to the truth of God in Jesus Christ. Moses, the law, all of these things were to point us to the truth of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ. To get stuck at anything or any point is to fall short of what that exists for in the first place. On a personal note, I'll say that uh, that was one of my, um, I guess you almost a fear uh, early in, in ministry was I would hear people say, oh yeah, well, brother so-and-so says da-da-da-da-da. And it's fine. If somebody has a point to make and they make it well, that's wonderful. But when all we do is quote what somebody else says about God instead of walking the path to God, we got stuck at a signpost. Our point is to never be stuck for less than anything than the full glory of God, the full truth of God, and to live in fellowship with it. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the many signposts, for the, the things that do direct us closer to you and help us to be the kind of people that, um, well, help us to not get stuck. God, it's so comfortable, especially on a long, tiring journey to just stop somewhere where um, we, we can see something telling us about you, but we fail to, to, to follow it all the way home. God, I pray for each person here in this, that they would follow your lead to the place of your salvation today. In Jesus' name, amen.